this video, we'll cover building your engine harness. We should note that this is by no means an easy task, and in many cases should be left to an experienced electromotive installer. That said, if you have the right tools, and most importantly, the patience and an attention to detail, it can be tackled by someone with a decent understanding of 12 volt electrical and automotive mechanics. When taking on a harness project, proper planning, along with the right tools of course, can make the difference between a quality installation and a total mess. It can also make diagnosing electrical issues down the road relatively easy instead of a complete nightmare. For those taking on this task for the first time, this video will allow you to avoid some of the more common missteps. And if you've done a couple of installs before, maybe you'll learn a new trick or two. Now, I'd like to start by stating that there are numerous ways to go about building a harness. This is a suggestion and an example of one way of going about the build process. If you're utilizing a professional installer and he has a different method he prefers using, this is not an indictment of said method. This is just a suggested method when starting with a universal flying lead. Ultimately though, there will be many takeaways from this demonstration that hold true regardless of what method you choose. Here's to establish a list of wires you'll be using and what if any currently unused wires you may want to use later. As many wires in the harness will go unused on most applications, we can remove pins that won't be used before we start. But while reinstalling an unused wire back into the harness isn't that hard, it might be easier to leave that wire in the harness and make it accessible if you think you'll use it later. We'll go over both removing wires and setting them aside for future use with our Nova, as a down the road upgrade will include a turbocharger, and there will definitely be some additional functions used, such as boost control and auxiliary injection output. The easiest way to start is with a copy of the harness pinout page. If you're going to print out any part of the manual, these are the pages you want handy for note taking. Here's one we've made for our Nova. As you can see, the wires we'll remove are crossed off the list, and those that need special assignment, such as the GPIOs, are clearly marked for their function. Once your list is made, we can go ahead and remove the unused wires from the harness. To remove or reinsert pins into the amp connector, loosen the connector's locking mechanism as such. When the locking mechanism is forward about a quarter of an inch, the pins inside will be unlocked and you can remove them by simply pulling on the wire. For some pins that are shared, such as the cam and crank sensor ground and shield wires, remove the pin, cut the unused wire at the terminal, and reinsert. Once we've removed all the unused wires and pins, lock back in place the locking mechanism, and then ensure that all the remaining pins are in place and haven't been pushed back into the connector in the process. This can be accomplished by simply doing a visual inspection of the front of the connector and making sure that all the pins that are still in place are flush against the connector. As for the currently unused wires that we want to keep for later use, we're going to use some terminal strips that will mount near the fuse and relay bank so that we can connect them easily for future need. Once we've trimmed the unused wires out of the harness, we can move on to the next step, mapping out the wire harness. Now since we've already gone through the planning stages, we should have a pretty good idea of where the harness is going to run. Now for us to be able to do this properly, we need to make sure that everything that we'll be wiring to is either in position already, or its location has been determined. And by this I don't just mean things like the DFU or the crank sensor, but also all the engine sensors, injectors, idle valve, external switches, indicator lights, fuses, relays, anything that the ECU is going to be connected to. This will allow us to properly measure out the harness. Now, make sure your measurements are accurate, specifically at the points at which the harness breaks out into separate directions. At the points at which the harness ends, we can leave it long and trim it to length when we attach the connectors. When you're ready to measure your harness in the car, draw yourself a diagram of roughly what the harness should look like. We've done ours on the computer. Make this schematic big enough to pencil in the lengths between runs and split points. 
once you've mapped out your harness down on paper, you can start making your measurements. Use a scrap piece of wire, or even a string or, or a little piece of rope, to lay down into the harness's path through the car. A light colored wire in the 14 to 10 gauge range would be a good choice, as you'll want to be able to mark the wire as you go along. Now, once you've marked off a section of the harness on the wire, you can measure that with a tape measure or a yardstick and write the information onto your schematic. This process can take some time, but a little time now will make for a much more seamless installation when the harness is completed. Now that we've mapped out where the harness is going to go to in the engine bay, we can focus on the details left inside the cab of the car. Now these will include mounting and wiring any fuses, relays, switches, and lights. Now these items will play into your harness build, especially if you're mounting them remotely from the ECU. Now depending on how many auxiliary functions you'll have the ECU perform, there can be quite a few wires going to the fuses and relays and back again. Now, because of this, you may want to create a separate diagram just for these functions. You can, take, you can see here we've created a diagram. It shows what additional relays, switches, and lights we'll be using, as well as the terminal strips we'll be using for this installation. Here you can see, after we've filled this out with notes and such. So, anyway, this diagram will better allow you to determine what wires need to leave from the main harness and what wires you will need to add back into it. Now in our Nova, we're mounting all the fuses and relays along with most of the lights and switches in the same location as the ECU. This will greatly reduce the amount of wire terminating that needs to be done inside the car. When you're picking your ECU location, consider mounting at least the fuses and relays in the same location to simplify your install. We're going to go ahead and mount and wire up all our accessories now. We'll discuss some of the more specific aspects of the fuse, relay, and switch wiring we're doing in our Nova in some separate short videos, but for the most part, the information you'll need to wire all these up will be located and covered in your manual. into a separate loom that will run independent of the main harness to prevent potential noise. Uh, also, we've used uh, these terminal strips here uh, for our build to make it easier to add to our unused wires later down the road and allow existing outputs to be repurposed. These are by no means necessary, but for this build it made sense. Now, as you can see, our relays are uh, mounted in such a way that we can add some more down the road if needed and on the front of our panel you will uh, you'll find both the fuses from our fuse and relay harness right here uh, as well as another set we've used for the uh, additional functions right here uh, now the switches to activate our internal data logging and the launch control feature are right underneath the data log status light, check engine light, launch control status light, we've uh, mounted right here. Uh, we've also went ahead and mounted our serial port right on the front panel, up here, since we've installed the CAN bus breakout cable here for future use. So now that we've got our harness mapped out and ready to build, we can start constructing it here on our workbench. The method we'll be employing involves mounting the unit to the bench and working out from there. Now since we've chosen to mount the fuses, relays, switches, and lights all to the custom glove box we've built, we will have been able to build almost the entire harness outside the car. As I stated previously, when you're figuring out where you'll mount the ECU, 
consider mounting the fuses and relays in the same location to streamline the install. Now we've mounted the unit as close as we can to its final mounting position in the car to keep the shape of the harness leaving the ECU correct. We'll work outward from here in the direction the harness will travel through the car and we'll add the loom to the harness during the build process. We'll leave adding the connections at the end of the wires till the harness is in the car to make it easier to lay into the vehicle and to ensure an exact length. Now that we're ready to start building, you can use the notes you took earlier on your pinout sheet along with your schematic to help you separate the wires into the correct groups. Take your time with this process and don't be surprised at how long it can take to get it just right. Don't skimp on details or look for shortcuts here and always look towards the next step in the installation when building your harness. And here is our almost completed harness ready to lay into the car and be finalized. Now, up until this point, we've been able to do most of our work here on our bench. Remember, trying to build a harness inside the vehicle from start to finish can be done, but due to space constraints in most cars, it takes much longer and rarely ends up looking quite as professional. Now, as you can see with our harness, we've completed the main engine harness up to and past its firewall uh, point. We've got the grommet in place. Everything is heat shrinked and loomed. Uh, the wires that are going to be breaking out from the uh, exit point and the engine compartment and off to their various locations have been uh, loomed here as well. We have our remaining engine, uh, remaining ECU harness, I should say, that will be uh, routed through the vehicle in a separate loom. This will end up over in the driver's side area to pick up the tack signal, some other switches we've installed, and uh, and our ignition feed. Uh, and of course we've got our power and ground connections. These have been kept from the main harness to reduce the possibility of interference uh, and will, you know, power will route to the battery through the firewall in its own grommet uh, and the ground point uh, will be underneath the dash. Now, since we're ready to put the harness in the car, we need to go ahead and mount our unit in its final location. Uh, for us, this means mounting the false glove box we've built into the dash. Our plan is to route the harness through the car in such a way that the entire glove box mount can be unscrewed and lowered for easy access. Once the ECU is in place, we can run our harness up to and through the firewall and onto the various termination points. We left a little bit of the looming for when the wires are under the hood to keep our few last split points as exact as possible. Now, as a reminder before we get started with finishing the harness, When terminating the connectors under the hood, the right crimping tool is essential for secure connections. And remember, if you don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on terminal specific crimpers, there are some very nice universal ones that should cover just about any of the terminals that you'll be using for your install. Just make sure you're using something like this, and not like this, to terminate the wires.
So, now that we've connected the last wire, we can proceed to powering up our unit and loading our base calibration file. You can get more information on those steps in our other videos. But, once you've loaded your base program and set up all the auxiliary functions in the software, you can power up the unit and verify that your at least your basic engine sensors are working. Now, if you have a crank trigger simulator, like this, you can actually simulate the engine running and verify that everything is working before even firing the engine. Either way, you should now be ready to test fire the motor. Now, before we do that, let's take a quick look at our finished installation. So, now that you've loaded your program, verified that all the sensors are working, we've hooked up our simulator, made sure that the coils are all firing, we're going to go ahead and test fire the motor. system isn't necessarily the easiest project you'll tackle, but with patience, proper planning, and the right tools, you can do this. So, now of course, for those installing an XDI or XDI2 ignition, your job will be a bit easier, but the same preparation and planning should be applied. One size fits all wire harnesses are out there, but they probably won't give you the flexibility or finished product that a true vehicle specific wire harness will. Now, the best things are worth working for, so don't cut corners with your project and do it right the first time. Now, for those looking for clarification on some of the more specific aspects of system and function wiring, we have a number of additional videos you can check out. If you have suggestions uh, for other topics you'd like to see covered, please share them with us via email at support at electromotive-inc.com.